Hello and welcome to the Nature Unplugged podcast where we are all about inspiring wellness in the digital age. Let's get going. Hello and welcome to the Nature Unplugged podcast with me, your host, Sebastian Sloven, and with me is co-host Sonia Mohammed. Hey, everybody. What's up, Sonia? What's up, Seb? Well, what's up is that we're on episode 54, Experience Nature Unplugged This Summer. That's the title. It's summer. It's summer. Almost well, summer. almost summer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start with a quote. You ready for this? Ready. What would our lives be like if our days and nights were as immersed in nature as they are in technology? And that's by Richard Louvre. Richard Louvre is one of our favorite uh, authors, our favorite people. He's been a big inspiration for us. And it's a great question to ponder as we get ready for summer, you know? Um, and in this episode, we are going to explore some of our favorite tips on how to have fun, how to have a fun, engaging, balanced, and nature-filled summer, not just one full of screens and Netflix and all that stuff. So we're going to be talking about all sorts of different ways to experience nature unplugged this summer. Sounds good. Sounds good. Before we get into it, though, we have some Nature Unplugged updates. Sonia. Yes. Today, I want to share a little bit about our Inu walks. So these are guided nature walks that offer companionship and mentorship, you know, while getting outside and unplugged. So they're safe. They're easy. Um, they're a great way to get a dose of nature time, movement, and human connection. All of our favorite things wrapped into one. Uh, walks come in three and ten packs, and they have varying locations and difficulty levels. And for more information, if that sounds interesting to you, visit our website at www.natureunplugged.com. Yeah, I think they're they've been going really well, and you know we hit up beaches, lagoons, local parks, nature reserves, local mountains, yeah, all are, sorts of different things. There are a lot of really great places in San Diego, and it's hard to find all of them on your own as well. That's it's right. Great to have someone show you. And of course, this is an in-person service, and I often like to say that um, these things that you're talking about here, uh, nature time, human connection, there's never going to be an app to replace those things. No, they keep trying, but never going to never gonna work out. I guess you can FaceTime people, but that's not quite the same. Not quite the same. Different. Nothing's going to ever replace nature time and human connection. I'll just leave it at that. Any other updates? No other updates. No other updates. Okay, great. Let's jump into it. So again, we're going to be talking about how to experience Nature Unplugged this summer. Uh, when summer, does summer start? Ooh, I got to look it up. The 20th? June 20th? Yeah, summer solstice. Yeah. I Maybe mean, 21st. A lot of school, I mean, a lot of schools have wrapped up. So even though it's not technically summer, it's summer for a lot of people in terms of the calendar year. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. And of course, that's for us in the Northern Hemisphere for our... Um, you know, Southern Hemisphere listeners, just... It's an important distinction. Thank you. They're getting ready for winter. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Our, Aust our Australian listeners might be uh, confused. It's okay. Um, all right. So let's get it going. I want to start with something called that I like to call, or we like to call, joining nature's gym. Ooh, sounds like a nice gym. Nature's gym, you know. How much does it cost? It's free. Ooh. That's one of the better. perks. That's one of the perks of Nature's Gym. I've got nothing against gym goers, you know? Yeah. I think it's great. Cool. Getting movement's important, and it's nice to go to a place where there's, you know, equipment and uh, a facility and trainers and so forth. I get it. I get it. But especially as the weather's getting nicer, uh, I think there's some, this is my personal preference, that like bail on the gym <laughs> and... Hit up Nature's Gym, which is... Or do both. Or do both, you know? Okay, do both. <laughs> do both. You know, baby steps, whatever you got to do. I would say just, you know, wrap up the gym membership, get outside. But basically, you know, this is... Joining Nature's Gym is looking at the outdoors as your gym. So whether that's finding a tree that you can climb, a park bench that you can do push-ups on or dips or whatever, um, the whole world becomes your equipment. I think do... <laughs> Doing this with, you know, being safe, of course, uh, you know, find a good tree for climbing. But I think having a little bit of danger in there is also a good part of uh, nature's gym. Yeah, learning risk management, you know. Risk management. But yeah, this could be going to the beach, 
could be going to the park, outdoor runs, um, carrying a big rock. Mm. There's all sorts of options. You know, I'll, I'll, um, as you may know, some of our listeners may know, I used to be a professional bodyboarder. It's a big claim to fame for me. It's kind of like, for those of you who don't know what bodyboarding is, it's sort of like surfing, only slightly different. Often looked at as less cool, but I think it's cool. Yeah, not by me. Yeah, Sonia thinks it's cool. I think it's cool. The point is, I spent a lot of time in, well, all sorts of tropical places when I was younger doing my bodyboarding, and we spent time in, I spent a lot of time in Hawaii. And one of the things, this is like the classic uh, big wave training maneuver, but we would do from time to time when the waves got small in Hawaii, is you go swimming, uh, you dive down, you maybe like eight, 10 feet deep water. You can go deeper if you wanna be more hardcore. Dive down, find a big rock, pick up the rock, run with the rock on the bottom of the ocean until you can't breathe. I've seen that in a movie. Yeah, it's in ba- yeah every surf movie <laughs> there is. Is that Blue Crush? Definitely in Blue Crush. It's like the iconic big wave training, but it's the hardest thing I've ever done. Is it hard to lift a rock underwater? No, because it's it lighter. Easier? Yeah, it's easier. But it just, it's hard it's just to do hard to cardio. <laughs> it's hard to do hard, intense cardio without breathing. Yeah. You know what else Nature's Gym Challenge reminds me of a little bit is um, when we were walking, I think it was probably like four or five months ago now, and uh, just sort of our regular neighborhood walk, but we've got some good trees around, and we saw our friend climbing a tree, and we were excited to see him, and... Um, then I forget, we were sort of standing away from the tree at first and waiting for him to come down. And this really concerned resident um, that has the tree in view came out and was like, do you know that guy? Is he okay? Is that a child? Do we need to call someone? Um, and uh, it was just, <laughs> it was a strange experience because I was like, this is so cool. Look at him climb the tree. Um, it was a tall tree, but uh, that's that element of risk that I think is okay. You know, yeah. um, do it. Do what feels just slightly uncomfortable, not incredibly dangerous. But that was our friend Isaac. Yeah, he was climbing. He was using nature's gym. That's literally yeah. what he does. He has a little, the little canyon outside of his house, and he'll run around and climb, climb trees. trees. And yeah, it's his workout. He's like Mowgli. He is. We all aspire to be like Isaac. <laughs> That's nature's gym. Oh, you know what, Sonia? What? Guess what? The timing is perfect for this nature's gym thing because we have. And e- this is the first ever, I want to mention this right now, our Inu Challenge, Nature's Gym. Inu oh, yeah. Challenge, of course, is Experience Nature Come Unplugged up. Challenge. It's coming up. And basically, our uh, Nature Unplugged team here, we are going to participate in the Nature's Gym Challenge. Tell and we, me more. Yeah. And I want to challenge you to do the same. But here's the deal. So from Monday, June 21st through Friday, June 25th, your challenge is to do a outdoors workout for at least 60 minutes each day so monday that would be friday, right? monday through friday yeah just a week you know um so again if you typically go to the gym the challenge is to switch up your routine get outdoors for your workout and we always we already talked about the many options here you can go for a hike go for a run go for a surf go for a swim you can climb a tree like isaac uh you can use a park bench you can use a rock whatever you want to do and we're going to be this is we're going to incorporate a little social media in this you know, mixing things up, but we're going to be posting some of our our workouts during that week, and we would love for you to do the same, and you can tag us at, at Nature Unplugged and uh, use the hashtag NU Gym Challenge. You can also take pictures if a video doesn't feel quite right for your yeah. experience, whatever's easiest. Whatever's easiest. You know, again, you know, not anti-tech, using social media, you know, hopefully to encourage people to get outside and use Nature's Gym. Okay, up next... This is one of my favorite things to do. You know, summertime, yes, year-round also <laughs> is, but especially in the summer, is uh, a good scavenger hunt. Nothing like a good scavenger hunt. Sonia, what do you think about scavenger I hunts? I do love, I love scavenger hunts. I love making scavenger hunts. It's really fun. Uh, they are such a great way to get outside and stay focused on the world around you, your surroundings, right? You're looking for all of these animals, plants, colors, etc. It keeps you fully engaged. Uh, it's also a really great way to connect with other people. They can be, it can be a competition if it's a group of friends, but it can just be a way to experience, you know, maybe somewhere you've been many times before. Maybe it's your backyard. Maybe it's walking around your neighborhood. Maybe it's at the beach. Maybe, you know, it's at a local park. It's great ways to experience 
things differently, um, and in my opinion, more richly, because you're so you're so involved in looking. You're you're looking in a different way. Does that make sense? It's a game. Yeah, it yeah. is a game, but it's a uh, yeah. No, that's right. It's a it's game. cool. It's yeah. a gamifying right nature. Yeah, and the outdoors. You know what? What? Speaking of scavenger hunts, mm-hmm. we have some great scavenger hunts. Yes, on we the do. interwebs. Yes. So you created these. I created them. I like creating them. It's very fun for me. Um, Because it's a great way for me to engage outside too. So uh, these are available on our Etsy account and we would love for you to check them out. Yeah, we'll link it in. Yeah. But there we got a, um, just a general nature scavenger hunt. There's a beach one. There's Mm -hmm. a backyard scavenger hunt and mini hunts. Yeah, mini hunts that engage your sensory motor skills as well. Something to climb over, something to climb under, jump on, et cetera. Interesting. Great for all ages. Mm Mm-hmm. Never too old for a scavenger hunt. Never too old for a scavenger hunt. That's what I always say. <laughs> for the first time. That's what I always say for starting now. Okay. Okay. The next tip. Mm-hmm. I feel a little bit, sometimes I feel funny about this one coming from San Diego, <laughs> but I'll just say it anyway. This one is embrace the weather. And of course, the weather in most parts of America are uh, is getting nicer, more appealing to the outside. But I know there's some places where it's probably getting extremely hot and extremely humid. Um, Or maybe you're somewhere where it's still really cold. The point is, get out there, regardless of the, you know, with this nature's gym thing, get out there regardless of rain or snow or shine or whatever it is, get out there and experience it. And I think this ties in nicely to our last podcast, which which was all about the the cost of comfort Mm -hmm. and the issues with us being sort of constantly comfortable uh, in our day, in our modern day and age, and getting outside and experiencing heat, experiencing cold, all of these things is a great way to uh, push back, push, kind of expand our comfort zone and uh, get out of the get out of the box, so to speak. And I'll say that weather, right, like rain and clouds and things that you would consider maybe less ideal or a less beautiful day they actually often bring out different animals and creatures that you can experience. You know, when it's raining, you can find worms, you can find other insects, and it's cloudy. I mean, you know this sometimes just with going to the zoo. When it's cloudy, you actually get better visibility of a lot of the animals because it's more pleasant for them to be out and about. So it's also an opportunity to see different things. Absolutely. That you miss if you stayed inside. Absolutely. There was a time where I was in uh, kind of the jungles of Central America, Nicaragua, so to speak, or in particular, not so to speak. (laughs) And uh, I was out at night walking around, got caught in a crazy rainstorm. Okay. Sounds scary. Looked down with my headlamp. This is maybe not a good one to (laughs) share, to inspire people. (laughs) I kid you not, spiders, insects everywhere. Everywhere and on they, the ground. They're not there if it's. Not I don't know. Raining. They were just freaking out. Oh. And and I, I was wearing oh. sandals. I was oh. totally freaked. Oh, was it maybe because their insect holes are getting a lot of water? Yeah, I don't know what was going on. I could have been a weird, you know, rain party. <laughs> Unrelated. Spider, yeah. Spider, just a spider, uh, kind of coincidental spider gathering. Huh. <laughs> Seems likely that was what was happening. It was probably because of the rain. But anyway, probably won't happen around here um, that spiders will come out of the woodwork. Anyway, moving on. So what do we? So we've done. Join Nature's Gym. Check out. Get a scavenger hunt going, whether it's ours or yours, whoever's. Embrace the weather. Mm-hmm. The next one, we're changing it up a little bit. This is okay. more of a tech-related one. Okay, there's a place for tech. There's a place for tech. Okay, like this podcast. This is one of our favorite apps for experiencing nature, and it's All Trails, A L L, Trails. I've heard of it. Have you? Yeah. So this is, again, it's not an unplugged thing. We're not anti-tech, but this is a great resource for getting out and exploring new places. And basically, you may have heard of this, you may have not heard of it, but it is a really user-friendly, wonderful application on your phone that basically you pull it up, you download it, and it, it has all sorts of hikes in your local community or area that it recommends. You can look for, you can search for different difficulty levels or different distances or whatever, dog friendly, uh, you know, you name it. Um, it's a great way to find a new hike. And they're also starting to incorporate, or they are now incorporating other things like, you know, it could be going for a climb or a surf. They're, they're 
highlighting other nature places for different activities besides oh, I didn't walking. Know that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, we love all trails. It's because it, even if you just go a little bit beyond where you would normally hike, sometimes it's hard to know where a good trail is, and it just takes your location and shows you what's around you. Yeah. It's wonderful. And a lot of times when we're actually speaking of our Inu walks, we will use all trails to um, to record, to just, you know, know uh, how far we've gone, elevation gain, all that stuff. I think there's a place for that to Definitely. a certain extent. So. Yeah, and it keeps you, if you lose your way a little bit, you're like, where did I turn? And you can just peek at it real quickly. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, then there's a free version, yep. which is really great. And if you want to go hardcore and have more, uh, you know, options and kind of offline maps and stuff like that, there's a, a pro version, which mm-hmm. is great too. Indeed. All trails. Okay, moving on. A couple more? Yeah, just a couple. Just a couple more. Oh, wait, there's so many though, Sonia. There's so many. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, this is tough. This is tough. Okay, okay. I'm just going to throw this out there. Now, human connection is something we talk about all the time. Yes. It's hugely important. And having some intentional alone time, sort of isolation, solitude, let's call it solitude, especially in nature, I think can be such a wonderful thing to incorporate to get more uh, nature unplugged time this summer. And so what we love to recommend is, um, you know, whether it's 30 minutes, an hour, five minutes, but some, some amount of alone time in nature you know, on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, is a great way to, I think it's going to be a great self-care practice, a great way to get in touch with how you're feeling, uh, a great reflect, reflective practice, um, and also I think just a wonderful antidote to like the, the hustle and bustle, especially if you live in a more kind of urban space or if you're you know, on social media a lot, it's a great kind of uh, reprieve? Yeah. Reprieve. Yeah, from rest and, and relax and... Recharged, you know? Yeah. And this can be uncomfortable, and that's part of the deal. You know, it can be, you you probably experience boredom and, um, you know, what do I do out here by myself? But I think those, again, those are the good discomforts to uh, to work through and navigate through. Mm. Mm. I like solitude, but isolation almost sounds punitive. Yeah. Let's go solitude. solitude. Yeah. I agree. I mean, and hang out with people this summer, you know, both things. (laughs) But, but I mean, I think, I think it's, it's really easy to get in the habit of just going from thing to thing to thing, social thing or virtual social thing. And so spending some time mixing it up solo is great. I agree. And I think the flip side of that is also great to spend time in nature with people. That's true. Uh, in the same way that you can be more present with yourself, you can be more present with others when you're out in nature and you have less, you know, um, stimulation from screens, devices, tasks, to-do lists, the hustle and bustle of regular life. When you're out in nature, it gets a little more simple. You can just be with people a little more easily. It makes it a, a richer connection, in my opinion. What yeah, are, yeah, I'm with you. you. Okay. I'm with you, yeah. So it's both solitude in nature and people in yeah, nature. Yeah, both and. We both love and. both ands. Okay, final one before we wrap it up. Mm. Urban birding. Yes, We've talked about this before. Worth talking about many times. Yeah. And this is basically, okay, you don't have to be a hardcore birder to get into this, but this is basically going out in your neighborhood, whether it's urban or rural or whatever, cruising around with the sole intention of looking for birds. Okay. You can bring binoculars, but you don't need to. But it's really just, you you bring your senses, your, uh, it's like a little mini safari and you look for birds. Around here, we have some great urban birding. Uh, you know, we got all sorts of stuff. Hummingbirds, you know, finches, egrets. hawks, egrets. There's so many. Seagulls, pigeons, osprey. Crows. Osprey, yeah. Yeah, it's there's a it's, this is a great birding spot, and I think it's just a great it's a great way to, you know, it's sort of like a scavenger hunt. It gives you sort of an intentional purpose and practice while you're out walking. Urban birding, check it out. Okay. Oh my gosh, you know what time it is? <clears throat> it's time for new news. Sonia, do the jingle. New news, new news, we got some new news. <laughs> that was great. Was it better? That was great. Yeah, yeah. And today, this episode of New News, this is a cool one, okay? Ready for this? I sang it for a reason. Yeah, that's true. 
Man plays piano to soothe ailing blind elephants at sanctuary in Thailand. Oh, sweet. It's very sweet. So this was a, a story we came across. There's a man named Paul Barton who volunteers, you know, and basically somehow figured out that these elephants on this, um, it's kind of like an elephant retirement center, it seems like, in Thailand. Cool. That these are <clears throat> often elephants who have been... Uh, with like laboring elephants like they've been you know okay. carrying people around for yeah. their whole lives and they they go and retire they go and retire or and there's often there's also a handful of blind elephants at this place so okay. it's kind of like you know these have, they've had a tough life these elephants got it paul barton who's a classical musician figured out that these elephants love classical music so he basically figured this out he takes a uh, piano out there to the to the place <clears throat> outdoors and plays piano for these elephants and you can see there's video of this we'll, we'll share a link it's really a beautiful thing the, they're like swaying back and forth their ears are going i'm talking about the elephants and they seem really into it and it's yeah. really kind of it's touching it's touching it's a touching piece i wonder how he figured out it was classical music you know did you try other musics first i wonder how they feel about let's say country i bet that would be nice too there's something about classical music, though, that is... I think, yeah, there's a lot of research around <laughs> classical music, but for humans as well. But that's that's cool. Yeah, slow classical music, and um, it's really cool. I think, um, what a great thing, what a great story, what a great... It's a perfect piece of new news, I'll just say that. Yes. Someone doing something cool, nature-related, music plus elephants. Uh, Doesn't get much better. Music plus elephants. So that's our new news for today. Oh, you know what, Sonia? What's that, Sebastian? We've got a new segment. Tell me about it. It's called the new spotlight. Okay. And you, and you spotlight. We're going to need a new, jingle. Yeah. Oh, ooh. oh on the spot? Uh, and you spotlight. Spotlight. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it's just the word, son. That's great. Okay, so the spotlight. Let's give some people, some people. Let's give everyone a overview of what the new spotlight is. And that is, and you, of course, Nature Unplugged Spotlight. It's all about highlighting a different bird or animal or cool nature spot. Um, you know, we've been doing it in our newsletter, and we're like, let's do it in our podcast. Yeah. Why not? So today we're going to highlight the Anna's Hummingbird. Speaking of birding and urban birding, the Anna's Hummingbird, this is like one of my favorite. Hummingbirds are my favorite types of birds. Okay, but why just, is this one your favorite? I'm, I've been curious about Well, this that. isn't necessarily, I want to be clear, this isn't necessarily my favorite type of hummingbird. Oh. But it's one I really like a lot. Okay. Okay. And there, it's one of the most common hummingbirds on the west coast of North America. So here in San Diego, we see these things all over the place. They're um, they're quite common, but nevertheless quite astonishing. <laughs> Is it their colors? What yeah, their color. Them? They're I mean, they're just they're tiny little hummingbirds. I guess they're average size for a hummingbird. Okay, um, but here's what makes them really special: they have iridescent emerald feathers, and um, also kind of on their throat area, they have these sparkling, the sparkling kind of rose pink throat feathers. Okay. That in with hitting the sun, like when it's in the sunlight the right way, it is like the craziest colors you've ever seen. Ooh. Yeah. They also, this is one of my favorite things to watch, is the Anna's hummingbird. They do this kind of mating ritual. It's a, it's the, basically the males will fly straight up into the air, about 130, 150 feet into the air, and then do a like super fast aggressive dive bomb down to within a few feet of the ground and loop back up. And they make this. I was actually just reading about this. I was. They make there's this specific noise. It's like a rip <laughs> that you can hear when at they get when they get to the bottom of that loop. And I always thought that was a, like kind of a noise they made with their throat, you know, like a call. But yeah. apparently it's from their tail feathers, somehow. Oh. Yeah. Is this is this uh, mating ritual something that only Anna's hummingbirds do, or do other hummingbirds do it as well? No, other hummingbirds, to my knowledge, other hummingbirds do this or do similar things, but they're they're all different. Okay, they're all slightly different. Yeah, so um, this kind of this is the particular dive dis the they call it the dive display for the the Anna's hummingbird is about 130 feet in the air, and it's crazy. Like I see this, I, I yeah, I've yeah, seen that before. Seen That's cool. It's really cool. So if you're on the west coast of North America, you know, you likely have seen these things before, but keep an eye out for the Anna's Hummingbird. That's our new spotlight. 
Our new spotlight, Sonia. Okay. I'll, I'll work on all the jingles. Yeah, you got to work on the jingles. That's yeah. your homework. That's my homework. Okay, so that basically wraps up our uh, Nature and Pug podcast. Getting ready for summer. Get get excited. Get excited. I so, am excited. I don't need to get excited. Okay, don't get excited. You are excited. Stay excited. Stay excited. Okay, just as a recap, though, I want to just remind folks to, if you're interested in accepting the E! New Challenge, mm -hmm. Nature's Gym, uh, we would love for you to be a part of it. You know, this is a great opportunity, again, to um, step outside your comfort zone, get outside, get some exercise, if you're feeling up to it, you know, tag us in your post. Uh, take a photo, take a video of you working out outdoors using Nature's Gym. We would love it. Okay, so thanks so much for tuning into the Nature Unplugged podcast. You can find our episodes on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and basically anywhere you want to listen to your podcasts. We're now on YouTube as well. If you could take a moment to rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, that would be super helpful. Be sure and visit www.natureunplugged.com for more information about our coaching, workshops, e-new walks, presentations, retreats, and all other, there's all other resources on there too, including this podcast. Um, of course, you can find detailed show notes with links to the scavenger hunt, to all trails, to wherever, to all the things we talked about uh, on our website. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, remember to experience Nature Unplugged. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Things change like seasons out of our control If you think you should go I will let you go oh.